שלום עליכם, ברוכים הבאים לכל אל אהבת ישראל. בעזרת השם, today we are doing a class on פרשת ויירה, sponsored by Partners in Torah Foundation, and בעזרת השם, as usual, we will have first and foremost a thank you to our sponsor, Mr. and Mrs. Selwyn Isako of Partners in Torah. We also want to say thank you to all of the rabbis and the scholars and the teacher around the world that teach Torah and bring the words of Hashem to just about any corner of the world. We know that we have about 1,500 cities and it's growing, Baruch Hashem. Again, thank you to Partners in Torah. We want to also thank you to all our sponsors. I want to thank you, everybody online that always watches and helps us share these classes. Be'ezat Hashem. Today is a very special day. As we know, it's election in Arzot Abrit. It's a, we have the election in America. And Be'ezat Hashem, we hope that Mr. Trump will win, you know, as he praises Hashem all the time and he praises Israel and he praises America and the goodness that it has to offer to the world. So we're really in support of goodness Torah and to get along together. You know, democracy is about really not just saying you're democratic. You have to be so-called democratic. You have to understand and honor each other's will. The Gemara says, Al pi rabim lahatot, you know, when the majority decides something, this what you have to honor, whether you like it or not. It's different things, but that's why there is election. So on this auspicious day, which we know is twice as good, Pa'amayim Kitov, and we started with Parashat Vayera. So it says, Vayera I love Adonai Belone Mamre, Vuhu Yoshef Petach Ohel Kechom Ayom. So we know Akadosh Baruch Hu is coming to visit Avraham Avinu, on or the third day of his Brit Milah, on his circumcision. And we know the third day is the worst day, it's the most painful way. Abraham Avinu is 99 years old. He does a circumcision with so in last parasha, parashat Lech Lecha. And he basically not just does it to himself, he does it in front of everybody and to his uh, uh, miss uh, concubine that was given the pilegish that was given by Sarah to Hagar's son Ishmael, the Egyptian. Abraham Avinu had three advisors. We have Mamre, we have Eshkol, and Einar. And you know, out of the three of them, there was one of them, Mamre, told. Abraham, yes, you have to do it, not just do it, do it in front of everybody so everybody will follow for generations to come. So we know that Abraham Avinu had hundreds of thousands of followers. You know, remember he defeated the so-called idolatry with Nimrod in Ur Kasdim, and he made, he and his wife Sarah made a lot of converts. At the time, there was no Jewish Yet, as far as being Jewish, there was Hebrews, and there was Ivrim, Me'ever Layarden. And as we know, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vayera Elav, Hashem. If you take the word Elav and Hashem, is also the letters of Eliyahu. You know, we know that Eliyahu Navi will come and visit in every Brit Milah, you know. And Hashem does Bikur Cholim. On the third day, we know that the third day is the worst day, most painful way. And not just most painful, Hashem made this day so hot. This is the first time, by the way, we have a temperature recorded in the Torah, so to speak. You know, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not want anybody to bother Abraham Avinu. After he did a circumcision to everybody and to himself, and he was always chasing you know, and bringing people to the tent to feed them, to teach them what's Birkat Amazon and who they really need to thank for the food and the bounty they have in the middle of the desert. 
You know, as we know, Abraham Avinu was, has the first Airbnb in the world. It's called Eshel. Katu Vaita Abraham Eshel Beveer Shava. Abraham Avinu built a tent that opened on all sides. Eshel in Hebrew is an acronym for three words. Achila, Shtia, Lina. Abraham Avinu had the first Airbnb. People came, they ate, they drank, and they slept. And we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu provided Abraham with bounty to really feed hundreds of thousands of people from the moment he left. When Hashem says, Lech Lecha, Me'artzecha, he left and all the followers left with him because they saw within him God. They said, listen, he was thrown into the fire by King Nimrod and it came out with nothing. A miracle in front of thousands and thousands of thousands of people. And everywhere he went, people joined him. And Abraham had to feed all of them. So now Hashem, this is the first time HaKadosh Baruch Hu really has been revealed to Abraham Avinu. Until now, Abraham never saw Hashem. This is the first time Abraham sees Hashem. You know, Hashem revealed what we call partial of what we can so-called understand and fathom and our so-called body can handle is in three times one with Abraham Avinu now and one when the people with Moshe Rabbeinu as we know on what we call Chazon Asne at the burning bush prophecy on Mount Sinai and once again when the people of Israel came out of Egypt as we know it says, as Yashir Moshe, we know that it says, Vayar, before that it says, Vayar Ahmet Adonai, Vayaminu Badonai, Moshe Abdo, the people of Israel saw Hashem. Then they believed him and they believed Moshe Rabbein. So all those times has, has a common thread all these times. Those three times is a common thread. And the thread is really that all the time there were a Brit Milah involved. Because you know, when the people of Israel were in Egypt for 210 years, Nobody did Brit Milah except the Levites. So when they came out of Egypt, Moshe and the seven, seven elderly performed Brit Milah on all the people of Israel in order for them to receive the Torah, in order for them to be able to see the Kolot, to, be, to see Hashem, and enable for them to really understand that we are all part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Neshama is Hashem Natan. And when Hashem revealed himself to Abraham Avinu here, he says, Vehu Yoshef Petach Ha'oel Kechom Hayom. So Kechom is the word very hot, right? Like they say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu took the sun out of its shell. You know, the Gemara will tell us, and of course in the book of uh, the Zohar and Ishayahu, that, you know, the Chama Nartika, she has a shell, a covering, that actually maintain our world from not burning or freezing. Our world is, as we know, is exactly the gematria of Shemesh. You know, the sun, Shemesh in Hebrew, is came to give life, Leshamesh et Aulam, right? Shemesh is in gematria 640. The sun is actually 640,000 kilometers away from Earth. And the earth is tilted on the axis of 20, almost 24%. Why? In order to provide the earth with the exact amount of oxygen, 21%, so the world will not burn, and if it moves even one degree, it will freeze. So in essence, Hashem made this day so hot, the word Kehom in Gematria is 68. It was 68 degrees of Celsius, you know, which were equivalent to 155 Fahrenheit. Imagine the heat. And Avraham Avinu still is waiting for guests. So this parasha is really teaches us a lot, a lot of amazing things. What are we to do when there is such trouble, when we have such a heat? The word Kehom is also Chacham, smart. Kechom, Zamila Chacham, Zachliot Chachamim, Afilusha Kadosh Baruchu, 
עושה לנו מה שנקרא הרבה הרבה מבחנים, צריך להתעלות מעל המבחן. מה זה בעיה? בעיה זה ראשי תיבות, בעזרת יא. הקדוש ברוך הוא come to visit אברהם, and כחום היום, he makes it so, in order for people not to visit. And אברהם still is looking, sitting at the opening of his tent, you know, אברהם אבינו's tent was open on all four sides, like the חופה, חופה open on all four sides, to resemble the tent of Sarah and אברהם אבינו. So everybody is welcome. And also to the Jewish people, the Arba Ruchot Hashamayim, they're all over the world and always helping and always providing blessings to the world. And Abraham sees, and he says, three Anashim Nitzavim Alav, Vaya, Vayaratz Likrata, Mipetach Ha'oel, Vayishtachavu Arza. All of a sudden, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is visiting Abraham, Bikur Cholim, and he talks to him. And all of a sudden, there is three people come and stand above Abraham, and then they take off, they leave. Abraham run. Remember, he's 99 years old. He's actually bleeding from his circumcision. By the way, circumcision is not really the correct word for Brit Milah. Brit Milah in Hebrew means covenants of the word. So the covenant is first and foremost to do the so-called Brit Mila. You know, Shira Shirim, the song of songs, uh, King Solomon, Amelach Shlomo says, Ed Hazamir Igiya, Hanitzanim Niru Ba'aretz. What's Ed Hazamir? Hazamir is not the bird, the nightingale. Hazamir is time to do the circumcision. Because, you know, until Avraham Avinu, there was no mitzvah of circumcision, right? And Hazamir came to do Zmira, to Zmor, like Mazmira, to Chtoch. Zamir is to cut. So we have the covenant to circumcise ourselves, to cut, and to keep the word of the Torah, Hamila. And Avraham Avinu chased them. But remember, if they're running away from him, that means that they're back of their head, but he sees them. So from here, Avraham Avinu has, first when they came, he thought it was people. The Torah says, Shlosha Anashim. You know, angels show up in our world like people. Sometimes you don't realize, but people that stand next to you or do something or help you, they are angels that send to do one task. I'll give you an example. We have a friend here in San Diego, in La Jolla. This guy just got married and he went to Nice in France. You know, Nice, we just had another terror attack there. But if you remember a few years back, there was a major terror attack in Nice and 86 people died. That day he was, this gentleman here, he got married a week before and he went to do a honeymoon in Nice. And he was walking with his wife, the new fresh wife. They're so happy, they're in love, they're walking around in the main street. All of a sudden, a guy come to him out of nowhere, starts speaking to him in Hebrew and says, come, come, I want to show you something in Hebrew. I want you to move to this little street here, to the side street. Literally, seconds later, the truck plows to the crowd and kills so many people. Of course, in this commotion, the Chatan and the Kala did not notice, but this person disappeared. They look around, second later is not there. Now, out of nowhere, to have a person that comes speak Hebrew to you, in the crowds of thousands of people, move you aside not to be killed, that's an angel. That Hashem sends looks like a person. We know here that if you read the first four verses, Avraham Avinu names does not appear at all. Why? The Hashem says, you know, he's such a righteous, with him I start the world. Meaning that if you look in Bereshit, it says, Ele toldot hashamayim ve'aretz behi bar'am. What's behi bar'am? It's the letter of Avraham. I will start the world, really, the Jewish people, from Avraham. As we know, when the first verse of the Torah says, Bereshit bara Elokim et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz, 
of course, we know the next thing it says, Vaharetz Aita Tohu Vavohu, Veruach Elohim Merachefet Al Pene Hamayim, Vayehi Or, Vayomer Hashem Yehi Or. So from those six words, we understand about the 6,000 years of the world. The first 2,000 years, Tohu Vavohu, was chaos. The Adam and all the sins, and then Noah and all the sins, the Mabul, the Rapalaga, all this chaos. Came Avraham, is the second 2000 years. Avraham Avinu was born in 1948 to the Jewish count. By the way, Tzchak was born in 2048. And Yaakov, of course, later. And Veruach Elohim, this is really when Hashem gives the Torah in these 2,000 years. We have what we call Matan Torah, right? We have, out of, uh, we have first coming out of it, Abraham Avinu, Yitzchak, Yaakov, the 12 tribes, Moshe and Aaron. We have the Torah, we have the Mishkan, we have the Beit HaMikdash HaRishon, Beit HaMikdash HaShini, the first and second temple, the Tabernacle. This is Ruach Elohim Rachefet Al Pnei HaMayim, Mayim is Torah. And then... The last 2,000 years, as we know, there are the years of redemption. And we are right now in 1953 years into this end of so-called Gola. And Vayihi Or. Vayihi Or is really the 7,000 year. Because, you know, the world was created in six days. Each day is a thousand years in our eyes, one day in Hashem's eyes. 6,000 years the world will exist. We're very close to the end. We know we are at 5,781, meaning 219 years. But Shlomo HaMelech revealed to us that the last 200 we shouldn't count. It's not for us. Meaning we have 19 years. Mashiach can come anytime between now and 19 years. Be'ezat Hashem. So when Abraham Avinu ran and chased those Anashim, he faces them, but in reality, they should not be facing him because they're running away. But the angel has four faces. On four sides, they have a face. We just don't see it. When we see people, we see one side. When an angel comes as people, they only come as a real person. They look like a real person, but they're not really. And Abraham Avinu urged them. He says, he leaves Hashem. And he goes to the angel. By the way, the halacha says in the Gemara that it's okay to leave Pene Kedusha in order to lekadem Pene Orchim. It's okay to leave Hashem in order to bring, to welcome guests. Hashem is okay with that. And he says, Vayomer Adonai, he says to Hashem, you know, I have to go get to those, you know, if na matzati chen benecha, don't leave me yet. I got to run and get these three guests. And he says to them, Abraham Avinu, first he offered them water. He thought there were Arabs to wash their feet because the Arabs, the, I don't know if you know, but they bless the dust they step on. Ridiculous. But in reality, Abraham Avinu then noticed that they're not people, they're angels. And he says to them, lean on the tree, meaning that they have one leg. Angels, as we know, they have one leg. Angels don't have two legs like mankind. They don't have knees, so to speak. And they stand, by the way, they stand in, in, on, you know, hovering over the earth. The Gemara says, the Zohar also brings that, that they can travel from one side of the world to another within split less than a second there's no time relevancy like the neshama to angels and we know that Abraham Avinu says go lean on the tree meaning that he recognized that those are angels angel needs to lean they cannot sit or they cannot stand or cannot lay down they have to lean and Abraham Avinu says yukachna me'atmaim as we mentioned Abraham says, Let, let's have a meal together. Let me feed you. The word pat in gematria, pat means a little piece of bread. Pat is 480 in gematria, alluding to 
בזכות אברהם אבינו will have the mishkan that will stand the tabernacle for 480 years. As we know, the mishkan was built the second year outside of Egypt, which was 2,449 to the Jewish count. And it was, as we know, inauguration was on 1st of Nisan. And it stood until Shiloh, 40 years in the desert and 440 years in Israel, altogether 480. Why? To defeat the powerful Satan's wife, name L-I-L-I-T, which is in Gematria 480. When the angel came to visit Abraham, that was Er of Pesach. It was the 14 Yudalet Benisan. And as we know, they'll go to two of them, will go to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, one to destroy, one to save Lot and his family. Michael will go back. And as we know, you'll see that Noah, I mean, I'm sorry, Noah, Lot offered them matzot. But here, Abraham Avinu, they said, okay, you can go ahead and feed us. The Zohar says that they ask a permission from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to eat with Abraham. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know, angels don't usually eat. They eat something else. They eat man. Man is what was given to us, the manna. The man was given to us in a desert for 40 years. It is the schut of Abraham Avinu. And of course, we know Miriam has the water. And Moshe also was part of bringing the water and man and Aaron, the clouds of glory. So Abraham goes to his wife Sarah, Vayimaher Abraham Hawala, El Sarah, Vama Mahari, Lushi, Shalosh Seim, Kemach Solet, Lushi, Vasi, Ogot. So we know that Abraham Avinu offered them, you know, Se'a is like, imagine, each Se'a is, you know, six kilos. So three se'a is 18 kilos. He wants to feed the angels 18 kilos of matzot. By the way, shalosh se'a, that's why we use three matzot on Pesach. First, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Second, from the three that he actually brought here. And as we know, vayimayar el anar Abraham vayikach ben bakar. So we know, the word, by the way, Ogot, is Matzot, Solet. You know, Abraham Avinu is chasing this Ben Bakal. So you know, the Zohar says that Raphael, the angel, by the way, the three angels that came to visit was, as we know, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. And they all came to do different things. Michael came to announce the birth of Yitzchak. Gabriel came to heal Abraham. And to save Lot the next day. And Raphael, I'm sorry, Raphael came to heal Abraham. And Gabriel came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Gabriel is Malacha Esh. And as we know, Raphael, if you look at the word Raphael, is also Par El. The Zohar says that the angel Raphael changed his appearance to be like Ben Bakal, like a, a, a calf, and he ran away, Par El, Raphael, all the way to Marat HaMachpelah, and he revealed to Avraham Avinu where Adam and Chava are buried, and when he and Sarah will be buried, and Yitzchak and Rivka, and Yaakov and Leah. The Zohar says that Avraham Avinu was studying with Adam Arishon in Marat HaMachpelah, the book of Yetzirah. And as we know, Adam Arishon revealed to Adam, the Zohar says, that every person that dies will come and stop at Me'arat HaMachpelah the Neshama to complain to Adam, and then they will go to Yerushalayim. V'hine Sulam Hashem Nitzav Arza, right? This is the opening to Gan Eden, two places. And the Zohar says that Avraham Avinu stands in the gates of hell, and everybody that has a Brit Milah, he saves. So we have to understand the power of Brit Mila could save you from hell. We know there is a guy named Herzl, Theodor Herzl. Theodor Herzl, Rasha Gamur, Sone Yudim, Antishem Yachigadul Shiesh. You know, Herzl, they give him a lot of credit. When we were kids, they were lying to us. 
in Israel, they say, oh, he's the best. Because of him, we have Israel. That's not true. Herzl did not want Israel. He wanted to convert all the Jew to Christianity and put him in Uganda. He did not even circumcise his own son. Hans, he called him. Hans committed suicide. Terrible. Let's continue. So Abraham Avinu now. Vayiten lefnehem. Vehu omed alehem tachat ha'etz. They say, by the way, this tree that Abraham sent them to, to be lean against, the tree is called Mamre. It was a tree that HaKadosh Baruch Hu revealed to Abraham, and it took from Gan Eden, because you know Gan Eden, Mikedem, is, there is heaven on earth, we don't see. And Abraham had a tree that whenever people came, he asked them to stand under the tree, and if the tree recognize it was a powerful divine tree that if the people were good people the the branches of the tree will open up and there'll be shadow you know shade i'm sorry tell and if not the branches will not open so he knew really who has to deal with every time people came and he know how to tackle them and and how to really work his so-called godly magic to change them and to make them do tshuva so Avraham Avinu, as we know now, has been revealed by Emruela, by Yesara. Michael says, speaks on behalf of all of them, the three of them. By the way, Michael was in the center, Gavriel Miyamin, and Raphael Mismol. And it says that they ask him, where is Sarah? Meaning they wanted him to understand the power of Sarah. Is a mitzvah when you go to visit a home, ask about everybody in the home. Ask about the wife, ask about the children. Even if you're just coming to see the husband. Because you know, a good wife is the source of all blessing. Isha tehora vekshira, shomeret shabbat, ve taharat ha-mishpacha. I mekor ha-bracha le-ba'ala yoter mekol ha-parnasim ba'olam. I meviyat ha-shefa ha-bayta. Ba'ala mekabel parnasa b'zchut ha-isha kedusha. Abraham says, and he taught us that the most important thing is your wife. And even Hashem says to him when she told him, when Sarah says, throw Hagar and Nishmael, he complained to Hashem. And Hashem says, what are you complaining? Do everything she tells you to do. And of course we know that now Michael says, Vayomer Shova Shuve Lecha Kaet, Hayavi Hine Ben Lesara Ishtecha, Vesara Shumat Peta Hawel, Vuacharab. He said that Ishmael was standing behind Sarai and the angel as Abraham Avin was listening and Sarai is listening and he plotted to kill Yitzchak. ואברהם ושרה זקנים באים בימים חדה להיות לשרה אורח כאן נשים. אז we know Sarah is 89 years old. And she doesn't have a womb, the Torah says. And she hears that, ותצחק שרה בקרבה. ותצחק בקרבה is really a prophecy that Sarah saw. תצחק בקרבה, it's יצחק and רבקה. She saw יצחק and his שידוך, רבקה. She complains and she says, I don't have the so-called female parts and my husband is old. The Adoni Zaken, she blames Avraham. We know HaKadosh Baruch Hu did Shlom Bait. It's the first time Hashem lies in the Torah, one and only. It was a white lie, so to speak. When Avraham says what Sarah said, even though she said Avraham Zaken, he didn't say, he says, we are old. He changed what Sarah said for Shlom Bait. And Vayomer Adonai Lavraham, Lama Tzachaka? Lama Ze Tzachaka Sarah? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Why Sarah laughed? Don't you know I make people, I cannot make a womb for her to be able to have a baby? He says, is there's anything I cannot do, Hashem cannot do. It does everything you look in the earth, in the world, in the skies, the heavens, everywhere you see is Hashem created. 
There's, and there's no such thing as Big Bang. It's all BS. It's all from Hashem, Bereshit Barayelokim, everything that He created. And as we know, Hashem says that you'll have a son. And He asks Sarah, why did you laugh? And Sarah, Vatikachesh, she denies. And she says, I did not laugh. So, you know, from here we learn that, you know, the halacha, women cannot be witnesses in court of law against their husbands because they fear of the law. And according to the Jewish law, you're not allowed to have women as witnesses. Sarah denies because she feared the law. Even though she laughed, she goes, I laugh because I'm old, but she did not say that. She changed. She said, I did not laugh. But in essence, she was not lying. She says, Ki yere'a. Vayomer Hashem, lo, ki tzachat. She says, I know you laughed. But really, in essence, what Sarah was not laughing in the sense of she was happy. She saw the prophecy of Yitzchak and Rivka. So now, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, and of course we know that Yitzchak will be born exactly, uh, we know that they came on Nisan, which we call Pesach, Tedvav ben Nisan. Yitzchak Avinu will be born next year, the year 2048 on Tedvav ben Nisan, exactly a year. And we know that Abraham Avinu was promised that his children will be enslaved for 400 years, even though they were only for 210. But the 400 years is count when the birth of Yitzchak. If you count 400 years from the birth of Yitzchak, which is the 15th of Nisan, 2048, 400 years later, it will be exactly Yetziat Mitzrayim. The people of Israel would leave Egypt on the 15th of Nisan, 2448, just as Hashem promised. Of course, they're going to destroy now the telling of Abraham that we're coming. Hashem says to him, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham says, let me see if I can find 50 righteous people, meaning Hamesh Miniani. Maybe there's 10 people in each city that's praise to Hashem. Maybe this is the power of a Minyan. A Minyan can help a city. Can help a city from being destroyed even by Hashem. That's how important for us to have minyan in every city. And, and we know Abraham Avinu is negotiating. He cannot find anybody at, at the end, only Lot, his nephew. And the Zohar says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu actually for 25 years waited to give a chance to the five cities, Sodom and Gomorrah and the five cities, to make tshuva. There was earthquakes there all the time. Nobody made tshuva. And at the end, the angels said to Noah, to uh, Lot, I'm sorry, that we have to leave in the morning. As we know, Lot, when the angel came to visit him, that was the 15th of Nisan. Pesach, and he said to them, sit down and I'll come eat with us. He says, Vayasuru ela vayavo el beto vayas laim ishtehum matzot afa vayochelu. So now we know that Lot saved them. And of course, something happened that night. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were, chaz vechalila, most unbelievable crimes in the world. It was like the the people that destroyed the world before the Mabul, they were gays, bestiality, other women, all kinds of bad things, and their majority were gay. And they wanted to have the relationship with these two so-called people. They didn't know their angels yet. And Lot says, listen, they're my guests, but let me give you my daughters. You can do whatever you want with them. Even that horrific act. Like who gives up their daughters? This is a trait of the going. 
We know the goyim, chaz v'chalila, they send the children to die, put a bomb on them like we see happen in Austria yesterday. I think there's six or seven people dead and 15 wounded, terror attack. You see like crazy stuff. This is the trait of the Ammonites and the Moabites. And it's also the trait of Ishmael, his mother Hagar, throw him to die. Who does that? From here we we'll learn the trait of the Goyim. The Jewish people, as we know, will die, or any normal person will never give up their children. They'll give up themselves before they give up the children. Not lot. So we see here that he says to them, Lot Nashim Alenu Otam. You know the word neda'a means to have sexual relationship with them. When we know in Abraham. I'm sorry, in, um, in Adam Arishon, he says, Vayida Adam et ishto chava, meaning that they had a mitzvah of Purvu, and of course they had five children. That was on the 10th hour of the day of Friday. And it says, please, my brothers, don't do harm to them. Here's my two daughters. You can take them. And of course, we see something that they're trying to break in and they wanted to kill the people, they have the people and, and kill Lot. And Akadosh Baruch Hu gave the power to the angels to blind all these people. And Lot now is revealed that he has to leave the town because they're going to be destroying the town. Gabriel is going to be completely destroying the town like an atomic bomb. And it says here that Sehum in a makom aze ki mashchit Adonai ta'ir vayhi ki metzachek be'ene chatana. Remember. Lot had four kids, four daughters, two of them were married, two of them were not. His wife named Irit with Ain. One of his married daughter was Piltit, and she was actually very tzaddiked, but she was killed by the people of Sodom. And now he urges just his two daughters that not married and his wife, Irit, to leave, but you know, Lot does not want to leave. The angel has to push him out. Why? Because he wanted to take all the money that he had from Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was the richest place on earth. The Gemara says, and the Zohar too, when you just put your hand in the ground and dug with your hand, you'll take out gold and diamond and jams and all the amazing topaz and all the most expensive diamonds like. That's why Lot wanted that, because it was a green place originally. It was the, what we call, Gvul of Gan Eden. It was the edge of Gan Eden on earth. And Yericho, Jericho, by the way, is Yericho, it was a reach, Nichoach Lashem, was an amazing place that smells so beautiful. But after Sodom and Gomorrah, it became the worst place on earth. It became what we call the lowest place on earth, Yam HaMelech. You know, Yam HaMelech is a soul that nothing grows. And of course, after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and the three cities, until today, nothing grows there. Not even a little plant, which a lot of the deserts have that. So we know, Vayaitzu HaMalachim Belot, the Russian to leave. Kum kach et ishtecha ve'et shte benotecha nimtsaot. So what's Hanimtsaot? You know, whenever the Torah has another word, we understand that there is a secret behind it. Hanimtsaot, the two, is really not the two physical daughters now that with Lot, is the two daughters that will come from them in Lot. We know when they came out, Hashem destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, the angel Gabriel did his task. And the daughters, as we know, Lot and his wife and daughters left the city. 
And Hashem says, don't look back. The angel gave instruction not to look back. And we know that his wife, Irit, looked back. And she became a pillar of salt, Natsiv Melach. So the Gemara will tell us why she looked back is not because she was not listening to Hashem, it's because she was worried about her two remaining daughters behind and their husband. But of course, Hashem pays what we call measure for measure, midah keneged midah. Why did she become a pillar of salt? So the Zohar will reveal to us that when the people came, the two angels, and they were hiding in the house of Lot, his wife, Eirit, said to her husband, I need to go get salt, we don't have salt. In essence, she went out and told the people, we have guests, and you're not allowed to have guests. There was no guest, in any guest that came, they killed or destroyed or punished or or put them in prison because they don't want anybody to share their wealth. So she told, using the need for salt, to tell about them. And she became exactly that, a pillar of salt. The Gemara says that every day there is Shor Hamidbar, there is an ox that comes and lick this pillar of salt. But one day in Tchiat Hamitim she will be resurrected. And as we know, the daughters thought that there is no more world. The world is destroyed. And they said that the two daughters, after Lot and his two daughters went to a cave, they saw the whole five cities are destroyed. And the pillar of smokes and everything. 